Okay, all right, so we're going to start here. Um, all right, group uh, one here with the OSI model. Um, and each one of you uh, will need to give us a question, but just do one at a time, and, and we're going to see if anybody can answer the question. So um, go ahead and ask your question. Name each protocol in each layer. Oh, wow, that's a hard question. All right, anybody want to try? Naming some protocols at uh, layers of the OSI model. Go ahead. TCP. All right. Think so. TCP. Right. What layer? Um, networks. Data. The tra transport layer. Tra TCP is transport layer four. Right. All right. So what? Yes. Any layer. Any, layer, any protocol. Okay. So let's see. For um. Application layer, there would be HTTPS, FTP, Telnet, yeah. um, SNMP, POP3, um, IMAP. Right. All, all those are application layer uh, 7 protocols. HTTP, HTTPS, right. IMAP, all those are good. Any, anybody, what, what about our network layer, layer 3? Anybody, what, what's our main protocol that we use at layer 3? IP, right? ICMP and ARP. And ARP, absolutely great. You know, and yeah, so, uh, all right, so that, that's good. All right, but that's a tough question, man. You know, your, your classmates are glad you're not making the exam questions. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next. next. Uh, what, the, what are the existing operating flyers of the OSI model? What is the system? Operating layers of the OSI model. Of the OSI model. So the system operating. The operating system. Yes. Of the OSI model. The operating system layers. So what, what what layers would the operating system work at? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's a real tough question. All right. So um, what what layers do the operating system work at? Is basically what they're asking. That's a rough. Rough question. Is it for a session? It's not session. So they're looking like layers one, two, or yeah. What what layers? What layers does the operating system work at? Would it be two? Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Yeah, that is that is correct. Yeah, that's a tough question for you. This group's tough. <laughs> but yeah, so the operating system can work at all those layers, right? Uh, all right. Um, last question for your group. Um, what are the hard, hardware layers of the OSI model? What are the hardware layers of the OSI model? One and two. One and two. All right. Absolutely. Man, great, great questions. All right. Um, I'm going to go up here front because you know, of my listing here. Uh, structured cabling. All right. So we'll go go here first. Just say, Just say one. Okay. Um, RJ11 is the current standard connector for CAT 6E Ethernet cables. True or false? All right. So is RJ11 the Standard for Cat E six Cat six E. Right. True or false? False. Right. Right. So so it's what is what is our standard? RJ forty five. RJ forty five. All right. Good. All right. Next question. What is the centralized point of interconnection for an organization's LAN or WAN? Okay, so what is the central point of connection for our WAN or LAN in an organization? Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. I'm assuming it's a three letter acronym, right? It is. <laughs> Give it a hint. Anyone? MFD. What is it? MFD. I think that's it's, it's very close. You got it transposed. M MDF. MDF. Okay. Yeah, MDF. Yeah, you had the letters. <laughs> and what does it stand for? Uh, main distribution frame or facility. Yes. 
Perfect. Okay. Next. Which cable is fire resistant? Which cable, right, is fire resistant? Or which style of cable, right, is fire resistant? You got That's two, 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 two types of basically of um, RJ45 cabling, right? One's more fire resistant. Plenum grade. Plenum grade, right? What's, what's the uh, least resistant usually? PVC. PVC. All right. Great questions. All right. All right. We're going to go back here, Freddie, and your change management. <laughs> <laughs> You say it's in your the question? Yeah, your question. The question was uh, about the uh, pen and the PVC. You can always just change in your How to maintain integrity with. Uh, integrity of a change, right? So how to maintain the integrity of the system? Is that is that the question? And the an answer is what's your answer to the question? What's that? To not follow the announcement was? Right. Okay, question is Oh, okay, so we're, uh, right, how, I guess your, your question is, is how to, how to implement change management, right? Okay, so his question is how to implement change management, and there's a listing in the book, right? You know, uh, it's create a vision, uh, communicate, uh, communication of vision, Remove obstacles and then ensure the integrity of the change. That's a, that's a very difficult question, but that's good. That's good. All right. Next question. You got it over here. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so this is to uh, promote change, right? So how do you promote change? And it's, you know, create, create urgency, build a team, uh, remove obstacles for the team, and go for quick wins, right? Those are good. Uh, all right, and let's go back here for business documents. My question was, uh, what kind of business document is a contract that defines the terms of future contracts between parties, such as payment terms or arbitration arrangements? Awesome. All right. So did everybody get that? What is the name of the contract that basically includes the future contracts? What is that called? There's a contract that includes the ability to create future contracts because it spells out the terms and agreements that future contracts will follow. Is, that, is it a work order? It is not a work order. Anyone? No? You're, you're, you're going to kick yourself when you hear it. <laughs> okay, it, it, it is a master, uh, uh, what am I looking at for, yeah, contract, right? Master service agreement. Service agreement, right, the master service agreement. Yeah, yeah, that was good, you stumped them, that's good. All right. Okay, so what document is required in order to use software produced by another company on your computers sold to the public? Okay. Software as a service. What documents required in order to use the software produced by company X on your computers sold to the public? Right. So basically, you're you're using software from somebody else, it can't be X, but you're selling it to your customers. Right? 
So there's there's some agreement or something that we need in order to legally do that. What's that? Is the master licensing agreement? But it is a, yes, right. A licensing agreement, master licensing agreement, right? Yes. Yes. Good. Good. That allows you to resell it, basically. Right. Okay. Uh, we'll go uh, back here for fiber optics. Uh, what makes like fiber optics unique in terms of like its physical? Okay, what what makes the fiber optics unique in regards to its physical components? Okay, that's good. How many how many were we looking for? Oh, just uh, oh, I don't know. It was, it was like that, and then mainly the, the glass. Glass. Okay. All right, so what characteristics makes fiber optics unique physical characteristics and right transfers light over the glass tube? All right, excellent. All right, next question. Uh, what are the pros and cons of single mode fibers versus multi mode fibers? What are the pros and cons between single mode and multi mode fiber? Okay. Bless you. All right, anyone? Why, why would you use single mode? Long, long way, right? Right, long, one, one way. Okay, right. So one way. Um, why would you use multi-mode? Huh? It goes both ways, right? Uh, but what, what's another? What's another good reason? Which, which one costs more? Right. So sing, single mode, right, Co costs way more. So you'll use multi-mode in, in your data centers, you know, because it's cheaper and, it, and you don't have to go so far, right? Um, but single mode is when you need to go distance um, and you absolutely need it. Um, <laughs> and you don't want optical loss. And you don't want optical, right, you don't want loss, right, exactly. But you, you need the distance um, and it's due to it doesn't lose Optical, it doesn't have so much optical loss, right? And tunation, right? A oh, good, good question. All right. Uh, are fiber optic cables affected by EMI? Are fiber optic cables affected by EMI? No, no they are not. That is correct. All right. So we've got our last group here uh, Twisted Fair. Yeah. Effectiveness of STP shields depends on what characteristics. I'm sorry, that was what? The effectiveness of STP shields depends on what characteristics. The effectiveness of STP or a shielded twisted pair depends on what characteristics? <laughs> Can you repeat that? All right, so if I got it right, it's what what characteristics of STP or shielded twisted pair uh, helps in its effectiveness? Right, is that pretty much? And so there's a characteristic of shielded twisted pair that provides the, the benefit of, of you know there's some physical characteristic. Foil. Foil, right? Is that that what you're looking for, or what were you looking for? Uh, there's four. The braid, braided braid, braid, copper shielding, right? The foil, and what else? Jacket. Jacket. One more. It's the consistency. And consi consistency. The before your level type, environment noise, thickness of material, grounding mechanism, asymmetry, consistency of the shielding. Right. That. Right. The grounding. Right. Definitely. Uh, um, definitely. Um, but yeah, so you have to have the, the braiding, shielding, right, the grounding, right, thickness, right. Okay, great question. All right. Um, how many wire pairs does the twisted pair cable in the Ethernet uh, network contain? Hey, how many pairs does our Ethernet uh, cabling contain? Our J45 twisted pair. 
Four, four pairs. Excellent, excellent. All right. Play. Uh, the number of twists per meter or foot is known as. Ooh. So there's a name for the twist in meters per foot of our twisted pair. What's that called? Is it twist ratio? There you go. Twist ratio. Man, yeah, tough question. Awesome. All right, Emily, let's round it off. What are the two types of twisted pair cables? Okay, what are the two types of twisted pair cables? Shielded and unshielded. Shielded and unshielded. All right, great job. Excellent, excellent. All right, uh, that, that is good. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, so why did, why did we think of this? Okay, pretty good. I mean, you guys came up with some really tough questions. <laughs> All right. Okay, so here what we'll do is uh, just more of a standard kind of review. Um, I'll just kind of ask you questions. And let's see here if I can get this. All right. Uh, Okay, um, this basically I'm going to throw this out to the room. So, um, in the TCP IP model, what layer combines the responsibilities of the application, presentation, and session layers from the OSI model? So, it's this other model, the TCP IP model. It's the application layer, right? Absolutely. Uh, all right. All right, should a continuity tester be used on a live network? No, right? Right, so. <laughs> right, it should not be, right? All right. Um, all right, what's our minimum uh, untwisted pair uh, cable required to support gigabit? All right, so you have the unshielded twisted pair, right, in the cable categories. Which category is, what's the minimum needed for gigabit transmission? Cat 5E. Cat 5E, yes. Cat 5E. All right. All right. All right, so you're, say you're an uh, administrator and you're trying to connect to the router's console port and you're using an unshielded twisted pair, RJ45, you know, that's meeting our uh, 568B standard, um, but it's not working. Why? You need a rollover cable to connect to the console port of a router. Or switch, right? You know, rollover cable. Good. All right. So, what's the maximum allowable distance for the unshielded twisted pair? It's right. It's, it's 100 meters, right? 330 feet, right? That's good. It's really. But 100 meters, 100 meters, right? That's how they'll usually ask the question and, and have meters. Um, and so what is the what is that cabling called usually, um, you know, you know uh, for the desktop? If we're going to the desktop, there's a, a name for that type of cabling. You know, you got cabling that goes from the main distribution frame up to the IDF, but then you go from the IDF to the desktops. What, what kind of cabling is that? Horizontal cabling. horizontal cabling, excellent. All right, so basically, horizontal cabling has a distance length of 100 meters, right? If you're using twisted pair. Uh, apparently, our test bank doesn't ask that or say that, but 
Just know if you see on the test, right, a horizontal cabling is 100 meters because <laughs> they're assuming you're not using fiber. <laughs> All right. Um, All right, so when we add headers, you know, as you're going down or up, uh, actually, when you add headers, when you're going you know, down the OSI model, what is that called? What's that process called when you're adding the headers and trailers to the data? Encapsulation. Encapsulation, absolutely. Uh, All right, here's a, and coaxial cabling, what does the RG rating measure? All right, that's a, that's a hard one and you probably never need to know, it, but what's that? It, right, the materials used for shielding and conducting core. So yeah, it is, yeah. All right, so if we got a signal that can only go in one direction, what, what is that? All right, what type of uh, signal is that? Simplex. Simplex, right? Right, so, and then if you can go both directions but not at the same time. Half duplex, right? And then, of course, both direction is duplex. All right, so if you had a serial cable with an RJ45 connector, would you be able to use it on your Ethernet port, or your RJ45 Ethernet port? If you have a serial cable that has an RJ45 connector, would you be able to plug it in and use it as an RJ45 Ethernet? or false oh come on this is a good one no no right it's not going to work it's a serial cable it's it's not designed for that but yeah uh, all right let's get that uh, all right so who defines our who defined our diagram symbols and and for representing router switches, firewalls, and other devices? <coughs> what company? You know, our diagrams. You know, just a little pictures of the rat, you know, the circle with the looking hockey the hockey puck with the arrows, right? And you know, those diagram symbols. Who 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 developed those? Cisco, right, Cisco. So it wasn't F5, right? So Cisco, right. Uh, all right. Okay, so you have a uh, modem that is continuously losing signal due to large distance from the transmitting device. What type of uh, transmission flaw is this? Okay. So what, what's, what, what, what is the term we give for, you know, the distance, right? You know, that how far something can go. Right. Well, if there's a you know there's a rating, right? It's it's alternation, right? So right. So you know the transmission flaw that's occurring due to alternation would be signal loss 
uh, due to long distance, right? Because that's the attenuation is how how far a signal can travel, right? So if you had if you had a Ethernet cable that was 110 meters long, you could have you'd have some errors, right? It may work most of the time, but you could have flakiness, and that would be due to the attenuation because the it's rated for 100 meters, right? I have no earthly idea why this question is a part of our test bank. What is the most popular web server application? Yeah, I know it's not up there. Yeah, it's it's Apache. No earthly idea why this is in a part of our test bank question, but Apache at least was the most popular web server application at the time of friend of the book. We'll go there. Not sure if it still is, but it is probably still up there. All right. So what what is a what is a bin radius for a cable? Well, but what, what, I mean, not, not the mathematical, but what, what, what does it mean? What, what does it mean? You know, yeah, how, how far you can arc or bend the cable, right? You can loop it without impairing the transmission, right? Uh, the bend radius. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what's the radius of the te technical circle if you were to combine both ends, you know, what would that radius be for that circle that would cause data transmission issues? Let's see here. All right, here's one that I don't agree with the book, but uh, so what is another name or type of manager for a change coordinator function. Project manager, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, project manager is the type of manager that for a change coordinator function, according to the book. We'll just go there. The book says that, but I won't get into it. why well, I disagree, but... <laughs> Because basically, it's going to matter on your 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 uh, company and organization and what what type that is, or even if it is a manager. <laughs> but change coordinator functions. Yeah, right. Functions as what type of manager? As project manager, um, at least for the exam. So, all right. Okay, what occurs if a network layer protocol is aware that a packet is larger than the maximum size for its network? What what will it do? What's that? Well, kind of, right? It, it'll break it, it it doesn't break it down. It actually it, it drops it and asks it to resend or try again, right? So it it'll drop drop it so if it's if somebody sent too big of a, a data on the net and the network layer that, that the network layer can't handle right it's set up to not handle that large it will drop it and tell it to try again <laughs> okay um what icon depicts a router in our network diagram? What, how can you best describe it? I just did it a little bit ago. But it's like a hockey puck with two arrows. Yeah, a hockey puck with two arrows, according to the book. That's, <laughs> but it does look like that. Uh, all right, so we had this in one, one of our questions, but so HTTP, IMAP4, FTP, and Telnet 
are examples of what layer of protocols, what layer would they operate at? One through seven. No, it's not TCP. Well, TCP is a protocol, but that works at layer four. So these are these are themselves protocols that work at their own layer. It's HTTP, FTP, IMAP4, Telnet. Layer seven, they're all applications, right? All application protocols. All right, so you have 10 G base ER and 10 G base EW. What what are their max of distance uh, limitations uh, for single mode fiber? Right. So remember my little trick that I had with with fiber, right? Is it 300? No, no, no. This is. So, right, so the, the L was like uh, was it 10K, and the E was extended, it was 40K, right? Right? Right, and then, uh, so it's kilometers, right? So, right, so it's 40, 40 kilometers. Uh, yeah. Sorry, kilometers, not kilometers, uh, kilometers. <laughs> uh, all right, um, but remember the, the E's, right, are extended. They're the 40, the L's are 10 when you're talking 10 gig, right? So one's long and one's extra long. <laughs> That's how I remember it. All right. Uh, so we have two types of fiber, uh, single mode and multi-mode. True or false? Come on. True, right? All right. All right, so which, which is more suitable for data, the 66 block or the 110 block? <laughs> 110, right? All right. The 66 was voice only, right? All right. So for fast Ethernet, what pins do we need? Uh, what what pins do does fast Ethernet use? There's four of them. Only four pins that fast Ethernet uses. You know, it's 100 megs. So at 100 megs, we only need four wires. One, two, three, and six. One, two, three, and six, right? One and two send, and three and six receive, right? So remember, remember my my electricians. They split off my cables, right, and created two two connections off of each cable because we were only 100 at the time, and then we went to gig. It was a mess. Because <laughs> then you need all eight. Uh, but yeah, one, two, three, and six uh, for fast Ethernet. Uh, all right. Uh, so at the uh, the frame header at the data link layer, bless you, includes hardware addresses for, of the source and destination network cards, or NICs. What's another name for this hardware address? MAC. MAC address, media access control, or MAC address, right? Each network card has its own MAC address. It's its physical hardware address, and it's unique for each network card. And it's used at layer two, at the data link layer, right? What, what device works at layer two? Switches, right? So switches care about MAC addresses, and they have tables of MAC addresses aligned with what port that network card is on, right? And it's basically based off the MAC address. All right. 
What's the minimum amount of voltage required to damage an electrical component? How many volts? Five. It's close, right? It's, it's 10. 10, 10. 10 volts is the minimum voltage required. That was close. So, yeah. I, I'd hate to send five through, but <laughs> or at least risk it anyway. All right, so which has a larger core, multi-fiber or uh, single, uh, multi-mode or uh, single mode? Which has the larger core? Which what? Multi, yeah, multi-mode has the bigger core. So with, with fiber optics, the bigger the core, actually the, the shorter the distance, right? Um, typically. Okay, according, according to the book, what is the most common, commonly used connector uh, for the 1.25 millimeter ferrule um, for fiber? So it's got a 1.25 millimeter fer ferrule and it's fiber. What, what's the most common connector? It's the LC, right. Yeah, it's the, the local connector, right? All right. I'm glad they don't <laughs> change it up, but yeah, so lo local connector, LC. Um, right, so TCP and UDP are protocols, and what layer do they reside at? Layer four, which is also transport layer. So what is the common standard width of a data rack? How many inches? How many inches wide is the data rack? 19. Excellent. Yes, there are 19 inch racks. How many, how many use? How many, how many one use or units? Mm -hmm. 42. 42. Excellent. All right. So you're sending a document to the vendor um, and you, you want them to uh, bid on your job. What, what type of document would you send to them? Request for a proposal. Request for a proposal, an RFP. Excellent. Yes. All right, so we have at the application layer, uh, there's a protocol that can be used to monitor and gather information about network traffic and can alert network administrators about adverse conditions that need attention. Can you, anyone name what that protocol is? SNMP, right? As simple enough <coughs> management protocol, very powerful protocol. All right, so we had the router. What's the diagram uh, icon for a switch? A box with four arrows. A box with four arrows, right? Pointing in the opposite, two pointing in the opposite direction of each other, right? Uh, what is the defining characteristic of a bus topology based network? And basically, what's that? Bus. bus, yeah. <laughs> in a line, right? Yeah, they're they're daisy chained, right? Together in a single line, right? 
So if you were to, the thing is, is if you were to, to separate one or damage one or have a bad connection, like in the middle, the, the far end would lose connection because they have to go through each other, right? It's, it's a single line. All right, so when you're terminating an Ethernet cable, how far should the cable sheath extend into the plug? How many fractions of an inch? Three eighths. All right, three eighths of an inch. Okay, excellent. All right, so basically, with all that we did and, and all that we just did there, we, we more or less took one of the exams. So I, I, I cut out about three or four questions that were a little too hard, especially with the, you know, with the uh, fiber optics, multi-time dimension. You know, it, it, the answers were just a little too much. <laughs> but take the quizzes, take the quizzes over. Those are the best way um, to uh, um, study for this uh, exam. Uh, anyone have any questions over any section or any information, anything we went over today so far? Okay. Uh, if we retake the quiz, we still get to keep our highest score. Yep, keeps the highest score. Keeps the highest score. Absolutely. You can't you can't get a lower score. So please take it over multiple times. You've got everything to gain and nothing to lose. Yeah. The more time you see take it, then the more likely you'll see every question on the exam. And by the time you come in, you'll you'll just be able to go right through the exam because you've seen every question. Right. That's the best way. Uh, anything else? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, definitely, if you haven't done so, make sure you get get the packet tracer. You know that that's technically due today, right? So please, please get that done, completed, and submitted. Um, Got a couple of days for the orientation. Yes. Mr. Riva, you can move it to 11:59. To 11:59. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about. Don't worry about the hour. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. No, right. Well, I'm on like chapter two. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's about eight more hours left. Right. Yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't. Don't worry about. <laughs> Don't worry about the hour, right? Yeah, I, yeah. If it's submitted today, it's it's not an issue, right? Okay. Yeah. So please get that done. Um, what's that? The packer tracer. Most of some of you already got it done, but um, but if you haven't done so, please get the packer tracer done and submitted. Um, we will have the exam on Wednesday, um, and it'll be 50 questions. Um, and the Good news, though, is for the exam on Wednesday. Once you're done, we'll be done because we won't start new material. I'm not gonna not gonna make you wait here for the whole hour for everybody to finish and then go over material. So, um, so when we we do the exam on Wednesday, that you'll be done. Uh, but that's all I have uh, for you. The rest of the time is to get you know packet tracer and you know, do any any. Uh, the discussion boards or whatever that you haven't done. You know, this is your time study you know, for the exam. Yeah. Uh, but I'll be here uh, the whole class time. Uh, so I'm here for any questions or anything.